Good morning and welcome to today's ceremony. We also welcome those attending virtually. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the transfer of authority uncasing ceremony in which the authority of U.S. Marine Corps Forces Northern Command is assumed by Lieutenant General Robert F. Hedlund, Commander, U.S. Marine Corps Forces Command, Commanding General, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for invocation of the plan of national anthem and honors. The invocation will now be given by Chaplain Iannucci, Deputy Force Chaplain. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we begin this ceremony, we invoke the power and presence of your holy name. As command of Mar 4 North passes from General Bellin to General Hudlin, we are reminded of the leadership and responsibilities, the commitment and sacrifices necessary to take on the challenges of today. We pause, Lord, for a moment to thank all the Marines, sailors, and civilians for their hard work and dedication, which made this transition a success. May they feel a reward of a job well done and take pride in knowing that they have helped in passing the mantle of authority onto a team that is ready to assume command responsibilities and to continue their good work. May your spirit always watch over General Hedlund and all of Mar 4 Com and Mar 4 North. We ask everything in your holy name. Amen. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David H. Berger. Honors to Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The Commander, U.S. Marine Corps Forces Northern Command, serves as the Marine Corps Service Component Commander for U.S. Northern Command, representing all Marine Corps capabilities and interests while exercising command and control over all assigned and attached Marine Corps forces. These duties include coordinating and validating anti-terrorism programs, force protection, deployments, employment, redeployments, sustainment, and planning for all assigned and attached Marine Corps forces ordered to conduct homeland defense operations and providing defense support of civil authorities. 
From the earliest of times, warriors used a banner of color and symbols to identify specific units and to serve as a rallying point for the troops. The battle colors of Marine Corps units symbolize the authority and accountability of command. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Lieutenant General Robert F. Hedelin, Commander, U.S. Marine Corps Forces Command, Commanding General Fleet Marine Force Atlantic, effective 09-8 December 2020, you will assume command of U.S. Marine Corps Forces Northern Command. Signed, David H. Berger, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to Commander, U.S. Marine Corps Forces Command and U.S. Marine Corps Forces Northern Command, Commanding General, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic, Lieutenant General Robert F. Hedelin. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 38th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David H. Berger. Well, first of all, uh, good morning to everybody. And it's really good to see uh, General Van Erk and uh, Admiral Grady and all the folks that we can't see on the, on the screen, but I think even though this was not the ceremony that you and uh, General Bellin probably had envisioned originally, nor I or, or General Van Erk, I think is still, the way the Sergeant Major and you uh, unfurl the colors, the ceremonies that we do matter. So I'm glad that you and uh, General Bellin held to the, the right way of doing a proper transfer of authority. It's the, it's the right way to do it. Um, let me start off first of all by thanking you for making the trip here and being here personally, uh, General Vanner, because it means a lot when the combatant commander is on the, on, on, the, on the scene for a transfer like this, it's significant. He could have more safely done this from Colorado, but his presence here, I think, sends a big signal, as does the partnership that you have built between you and, and Admiral Grady, the symbolism not lost on me either. And the fact that all three of you are in the front row, pretty, if there was one picture, in other words, you could boil this whole ceremony down to one picture and say this is what America's defense looks like, it's probably not a bad picture, the front row. Like this is, this is a don't mess with us sort of a, sort of a day. Um, I thank also, I'm grateful for all the hard work from, and the leadership from General Dave Bellin and his team in, in, in New Orleans. He had the mission of handing off a, a task, a responsibility. And although I think it's one thing to gain it, to accept it, and it's exciting and it's learning, it's another thing to own it and without dropping anything on the floor, hand it off properly. And, and the two staffs working together without, frankly, without me interfering or our headquarters Marine Corps getting in the way was a wonder to watch. When, when two staffs of professionals can take a mission and, and without any micromanagement or detailed guidance, just sort through it all and lay it all flat. Very heartwarming for a leader just to watch two other leaders and their staffs work through things. And in six months, there's, there's absolutely nothing that I did to, it, to speed it up or to, or to help. You, you didn't need it. And I, I attribute that to just really two great leaders and their senior enlisted uh, leaders and their staffs just working as two professional teams. So I'm thankful for that. My, I won't s speak long this morning. 
I'll just highlight one aspect. If you listen to the um, the mission of Mar 4 North, it probably, if you weren't accustomed to that kind of a mission, seems like a pretty wide problem set to tackle. And and as General Van Erk knows better than anyone else in the room, that's that's intentional. It's not by accident. Defending this country from from Northern Command's perspective and its components, I think, is a wide portfolio. It's a it's it's diverse. It's wide on purpose. I think it's a natural fit for this command. Here's why. I think unique, uh, not I think, unique to the Marine Corps is that we are assigned by law the role of being force in readiness, the most prepared when the nation is least prepared, on the one hand, and on the other hand is the wide spectrum of and all missions that the President may direct, unique to the Marine Corps. So I think today, this morning, is a perfect fit for your command because those two parts, I think, are indelible elements of what it takes to defend our country. You have to be ready, because I think you and Admiral Grady and General Van Erk are not, when it comes to defending the country, you're not going to have hours or days or weeks to prepare to get ready. You have to be ready all the time, every day. I think that's what he expects of, 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 of this team, rightfully so. So I think on that part, it's a natural fit. Be ready. Uh, all the time, even when the rest of the nation may not be so prepared, the two of you, I think, are, have to be ready every day. And then the second part, the other such missions as the President may direct, I think, is a natural one, too, because it means that it's, there are no bounds to the limits that we will go to defend our country, and not all tasks are going to be written in a mission statement. So the two of you just have to take your cue, as you always have, from a combatant commander who it's not defined, it's not written down, but I need you to do X. I need you to figure it out. And I'm very, I know that, I, I won't speak for the CNO, I just am very confident that he and I are confident in the two of you that whatever it takes from Northern Command, whatever the task is that's not written perhaps down on paper that he gives to you, I need you to be ready to do this, that you'll figure out a way. So on both parts for the Marine Corps, being ready, and other such missions that may not be so well defined in advance, you're going to be ready to adapt to. Just grateful. Again, thanks for allowing me to be a small part of the ceremony. Congratulations to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander, North American Aerospace Defense Command and United States Northern Command, General Glenn Dan D. Van Herrick. Well, good morning. Welcome, as the Commandant said. Uh, those in the room here and those watching, uh, thank you so much. Commandant, thank you for being here. It's really important. Uh, you, you said it and captured it. Uh, I wanted to do this for a reason. It's really to send a message, an internal message to the people in here in the room uh, watching, those uh, watching on the, the video, if you will, but uh, also potential adversaries and competitors out there each and every day. Uh, the importance of Homeland Defense the importance and uh, priority that we place on it. And so I, I appreciate you doing that, uh, Commandant. Really, really appreciate it. Admiral Grady, good to see you again. Thanks for hosting me last night. Appreciate you being here in General Hedlund. Uh, Sergeant Major Black, thanks for coming down as well. And you and uh, Sergeant Major Wiggins for the support uh, to make this happen as well. It, you were instrumental in, uh, in helping to get this here. The Commandant uh, identified the the team, so working together. Uh, my NORTHCOM team, um, I don't think we were necessarily hands-on uh, as much. We turned a, a couple of commands loose uh, that allowed this to happen. May, maybe Fuzzy has a different perspective, but uh, I think uh, that, that we got here uh, pretty efficiently and effectively. So I sincerely appreciate the, the work here. Um, you, you heard the, the mission, uh, Homeland Defense, Defense Support of Civil Authorities, uh, and Theater Security Cooperation. Um, two of those are absolutely no-fail missions that we have to be ready each and every day to do, accomplish, and that would be the Homeland Defense, which is wide and broad, uh, and defense support of civil authorities. Each of those, I think Homeland Defense is absolutely the most sacred mission that anybody serving could ever have. Uh, defense of 
support of civil authorities serving and providing support to those who either have a natural disaster or man-made disaster suffering right here in our own country is a noble mission as well. One that are both no fail that we have to be ready to go each and every day. And with regards to theater uh, uh, security cooperation, uh, that is critical as well. Uh, although I don't have a lot of countries in North Com uh, Northern Command, uh, Canada, Mexico, and the Bahamas, uh, certainly very uh, influential in defense of the homeland. Uh, and I'm going to charge you with devel developing those relationships as well. Uh, the Commandant alluded to it, uh, but uh, General Bellin and team at uh, MAR 4 Res did an incredible job uh, supporting U.S. Northern Command. Uh, just in the past year, uh, nearly 2,000 uh, Marines under their C-2, if you will, on the southwest border that freed up significant capacity inside uh, CBP, uh, Customs and Border Protection, uh, to get after a mission on the southwest border. I'm a firm believer that uh, border security equals national security. Uh, allowing them uh, to get after that mission uh, directly contributes to homeland defense, and it's important. Uh, but ultimately, uh, homeland security uh, and homeland defense is critical for me. Uh, they also provided uh, that theater security cooperation, uh, and they did it well. They did it in partnership with uh, JTF North and uh, uh, NAV North as well training Marines and making professionals, especially uh, in Mexico. Uh, you guys create a, a unique culture. Uh, for the professionalism that you create from our Mexican partners uh, is a very influential in their ability to have an impact on the uh, defense of Mexico, which ultimately has an impact here. Uh, 2015, uh, Marines who had trained Mexican Marines were instrumental in the capture of El Chapo. Okay, uh, uh, getting one of the worst uh, criminals off the street, significant contribution. And just this year, uh, wildland firefighting, uh, providing support to those who are suffering from uh, natural disasters, if you will. Uh, those challenges won't go away. If anything, we're in the business of uh, growing our capabilities for homeland defense, uh, and I expect environmental changes to continue to create natural uh, disaster problems for us. And so I know you'll be ready uh, each and every day to, to execute that. Uh, Commandant, I will tell you, I just signed a note uh, and sent it to the Secretary of the Navy uh, asking for um, hazardous duty pay for those folks that provided support to the wildland fires. I don't know if people are tracking, but uh, 13 professionals, not DOD, but 13 professionals lost their lives this year fighting wildfires out west. Uh, it's a hazardous duty, and I think it's worthy of hazardous duty pay for those that we sign up from the department to go do that mission. And so uh, thank you for your support. Uh, as this mission changes over, Homeland Defense, as I already alluded to, has absolutely changed. Our adversaries, competitors have watched us for decades now, uh, and they've developed capabilities to hold us at risk. We have a culture of forward power projection. That's what you do really well in the Marine Corps, and I get that. Uh, but our adversaries have created capabilities to uh, limit our power projection, especially from the homeland. So we have to think differently. We have to change culture. We need to have a global perspective, uh, global strategies, plans, the way we manage our forces, the way we design and develop our forces it needs to factor in the fact that the homeland is no longer a sanctuary. We have to ask ourselves as we create plans and strategies about uh, the risk to the homeland and the risk of strategic deterrence failure. I know you'll do that. We have to think differently about the defending the homeland, and we can't afford to kinetically defend and defeat every attack that comes on the homeland. So I'm going to challenge you, and I know Admiral Grady's already there, the CNO's there, Commandant, you and I talked a little bit today, to think differently about homeland. It's about getting inside the gray matter of uh, potential adversaries and our competitors and creating doubt in their minds about their capabilities. You do that with rapid, agile flexibility, which the Marine Corps brings. You do that through exercises and demonstrations of our readiness to do that uh, kind of business. And so I look forward to, to partnering with you as we move down uh, that, that path and, uh, and uh, create that doubt uh, in our adversaries' uh, minds. It's an all-domain fight today. Uh, and it goes, starts with competition uh, all the way through crisis and uh, into conflict. Uh, the future fight, in my mind, will be won or lost based on our ability to achieve information dominance and have decision superiority over our adversaries and to operate inside their, their OODA loop. I think that also creates deterrence effect, deterrence for homeland, and that's one of those challenges that I would uh, ask everybody to think about. Okay, so southwest border, I'll talk really quickly. 
because uh, there's a homeland defense nexus there. The challenges south of the border continue to grow, and it's a great power competition as well now south of our border. Uh, the the counter-narcotics business continues to grow, but it's changing dramatically. It's changing away from a cocaine focus coming out of South America to a synthetic focus right here in our own neighborhood, right just south of our border, where they're creating factories and, and capability to uh, develop large quantities of, uh, of drugs. That creates significant instability in Mexico with the Mexican government. And our competitors, China, Russia, Iran, are taking advantage of that and trying to move in, not only in Mexico, but in the Bahamas as well. And so we have to be all over that as from a great power competition and think differently uh, moving forward. So I challenge you and look forward to continuing to partner with you, uh, Fuzzy, in the, the way forward. Uh, access and relationships are crucial. Theater security cooperation will give that as you continue to, to work with our, our partners and allies uh, around the globe, if you will. Uh, moving forward. So I look forward to that. So thanks for the opportunity, Commandant. Your support in making this happen is crucial. I think aligning uh, the force generation for both the Navy and the Marine Corps here with our homeland defense mission is brilliant. Your support uh, was uh, greatly appreciated in making that happen. So thank you so much. I look forward to working closely with you. Congrats. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Robert F. Hedlund. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, General Berger, General Van Hurt, Admiral Grady, Sergeant Major Black, thanks for, for joining us this morning. I'm, I'm keenly aware that a, uh, a service chief uh, four-star has already spoken, a combatant commander has already spoken, uh, where's a four-star rank and there's a four-star admiral in the room with fleet commanders also all three saying what is some three-star going to say at this point uh, but I, I think it's important that uh, that I thank those who have made this possible and uh, the work that has gone on from my predecessor in this command uh, uh, General Bellin uh, setting the stage and ensuring that as a comment I mentioned you know nobody wants to hand over something that, uh, that they haven't taken good care of. And uh, certainly General Bellin and his staff have done that. As the senior enlisted advisors both here in, uh, in Norfolk and down in uh, New Orleans worked really hard to ensure that this was appropriate, but still uh, COVID aware, if you will. And uh, as a comment I mentioned, uh, it, while the Marine Corps is noted for its uh, ruffles and flourishes, if you will, we when we're not able to do that, it is still really important that the, that the fundamental piece of this, the actual transfer of authority, is done uh, solemnly and with great respect, but also with the knowledge that uh, we'll get back to doing the, the fun part of the ceremonies at some point. So my thanks to, to them, to the staffs that worked very hard on this project to ensure that it gets to this point. And I want to emphasize that this is really just the beginning of the journey. Uh, it's a new chapter, really. Uh, Dave Bellin and his folks and all the predecessors at Mar 4 North uh, in the past have, have set the stage for us to continue the mission. And uh, we're very uh, humbled and we are privileged, I think, to be able to now open a new chapter on Mar 4 North and take it uh, into the future. Uh, I think our relationship here in Norfolk and my relationship with, with Admiral Grady and with uh, Fleet Forces Command has really set the stage for getting the most out of that relationship and uh, it, yeah, I, I couldn't have I don't think anybody could have come up with a plan that came together better than to set the stage work hard on naval integration with the understanding that the goal of the of the uh, is better war fighting at the end of the day and the Commandant's vision of uh, force design uh, enables that and allows us to ensure that we take full advantage of each other's capabilities and now with the, the opportunity now to really explore uh, a, a full, uh, fully fledged GIFMIC uh, in the NORTHCOM AOR, I think, is really exciting uh, going forward. So the the groundwork's been laid. Uh, there's still plenty of work to be done. Uh, there is uh, certainly uh, no shortage of uh, of tasks to accomplish. But we look forward here in in Norfolk and the, the staff that remains in in New Orleans here to contribute wholly and completely to uh, the defense of our nation. And that's really what this is all about, is ensuring that as a team, 
we defend this nation to the best of our ability, regardless of the hat that we wear or the mission that we're assigned. Pitch in, do what you can, complete the mission, and succeed at the end of the day. So gentlemen, thank you for attending this morning. Thanks to those who have joined us both virtually and in person, and I look forward to working hard as, a, uh, as an adequate team member of, uh, of this team. Thanks very much. Semper Fi. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction, playing of Anchors Away, Marines Hymn, and departure of the official party. Let us pray. Lord God, now that command authority has transferred to General Hedlund, we ask your spirit to watch over him so he can lead wisely to ensure the safety and effective employment of all Marines, sailors, and civilians entrusted to his care. We thank you, Lord, for General Bellin's leadership, and we wish him Godspeed as he continues his duties as commander of Mar 4 Res. Lord, we also remember all the men and women who are deployed and away from their families during this holiday season and ask you to watch over them and bring them home safely. We ask everything in your most holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for your attendance.